book to accompany Scientific Eye has been published by Bell and Hyman and is available from your local supplier and most good booksellers. Two computer programs developed from the Science and Technology series are available on disk for the BBC B Computer together with a booklet for teachers. These can be obtained from GSN Educational Software, 214 Stamford Street, Ashton under Lyme, Lancashire, or from the education officer of your local ITV company. and a plan, minutes, please. Technology uses scientific ideas in industry, perhaps to make chemicals or to produce and shape metals. Biotechnology makes use of living materials, microbes, either to change other things or because the microbes themselves are useful. Thank you. That's one pretty sir. The use of living materials isn't new. Almost everything in this lunch was produced using microbes. Bacteria help to make the butter and the cheese from milk, and yeast help to shape the bread and to brew the beer. This small brewery produces beer in a way unchanged for centuries. Yeast is added to a mash of barley, sugar, and hops. With a food such as sugar, yeast cells grow in size and reproduce. Yeast changes the sugar to produce alcohol and carbon dioxide. When microbes like yeast grow and make useful substances, the reaction is called fermentation. And there's a vast range of such reactions, each using different microbes, different foodstuffs, and different growing conditions. Microbes themselves are stored in small quantities at very low temperatures, around minus 150 degrees Celsius. They start growth in a flask that contains food for the microbes. This transfer from store to flask needs to be made carefully to prevent contamination. The flask is kept at the best temperature for microbe growth. Shaking ensures a supply of oxygen. 
As the number of microbes increases, they are moved from the shake flask to a larger fermenter. The fermenter is fed with a continuous supply of oxygen. Food stuff is fed in. And as the fermentation continues, microbes are continuously pumped out. The microbe will grow best at a certain temperature and when stirred at a particular rate. The growth will be most rapid within a narrow range of pH. This fermenter is laboratory size. In industry, the scale of the reaction can be vastly increased. Microbes can be produced by the ton. This is just the top of a large industrial fermenter. Microbes are being fed into the fermenter from the steel bottle. In some fermentations, biotechnologists are interested in the microbe itself. But here, the important byproduct is an antibiotic. The antibiotic is extracted as a powder. Technicians working on antibiotic production sometimes need to wear suits like these. The suit completely covers the body to prevent any chance of contamination. And each suit has one of these. An external air supply for breathing. Antibiotics are important as medicines because they can destroy harmful bacteria. One of the first, and still a most important use of fermentation, is in the production of such medicines. Washing powder works with the water in the washing machine to dislodge small particles of dirt from the clothing and to make sure that the same dirt doesn't get back onto the material. But there's a problem, and it's nothing to do with the washing powder itself. Many of the clothes we wear are made from synthetic fibres or from a mixture of perhaps cotton and synthetics, and often the material has been dyed. Hot water around 95 degrees Celsius will damage those fibres and many dyes aren't fast at that high temperature. This label recommends that this shirt shouldn't be washed in water hotter than 40 degrees Celsius. The problem is that traditional washing powders don't work so efficiently at those low temperatures. And that's why you'll find two types of powder on the supermarket shelves. An original type, and next to it, a packet that will say, biological. So, Malcolm, tell me what, uh, what sort of marks washing powders have to remove. Well, Max, I've got some examples here which show uh, different sorts of stains and different degrees of difficulty. Right, what's this uh, one? The first one's the most simple, really, and that's just mud or soil, uh, which can be removed very easily once the detergent has lowered the surface tension of the water and it can then just lift off the stain. Right, and what's this one over here? Well, the next one is also very commonly found, and that's coloured marks caused by uh, fruit juice, tea, coffee. Well, all powders contain amyl bleach, and that works by uh, liberating oxygen uh, in the wash liquor, and that just bleaches out the stain. A bit more difficult now, we come on to what we call proteinaceous stains. Yeah. Uh, things like food stains, you can see on the tea towel here, egg and tomato ketchup. Body stains like uh, grime on collars and cuffs. Uh, these contain protein, and the protein acts like a glue to stick the stain onto the fabric 
so that the detergent can't lift it away. So what's the answer? The answer is to use a biological washing powder. How does that work? And that works because biological washing powders contain enzymes which have been grown in cell cultures, extracted and added in small amounts. And the enzymes react with the protein, break it up into small pieces so that the detergent can lift the stain away. Washing powders are complicated mixtures with each ingredient having a particular job. But this mixture doesn't happen by chance. It may follow years of testing to get it right. Technologists will test their new powders with load after load of dirty washing. Often, the washing machine's own programmer is bypassed and replaced by a computer. The computer ensures that the washing time is accurately controlled. There will be precise records of the amounts of water used for washing. Any differences in washing will then be because of differences in washing powder. These tea towels were washed in a traditional powder on the left and biological on the right. Technologists also wash test cloths that have known stains. This is a cocoa stain, before and after washing. And the wash water can be changed to represent different degrees of water hardness. These are blood stains, before and after washing. But not all tests of washing powder take place in the laboratory. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to wait for washing to see exactly how much you're going to put in. Make quarters. And what I'd like you to do, on the blue towel that you've got there, if you will pin the test cloth. Although washing powders may work well in computer-controlled machines, Eventually, those powders will need to work equally well at home. OK, yes. so if you put it in the machine as you normally would do... What programme are you going to use on this one? Number four. Number four. OK, so if you actually would put the powder in for me now... Different people will have different ideas about how to get the best from their machine. Two of those. Washing powders will need to do their job in a range of conditions. They need to work even when the amount of washing or the quantity of powder or the wash time or temperature are not precisely what they should be. The colored test materials are checked after each washing using a color analyzer connected to a computer. The computer records the loss of color, if any, from wash test to wash test. Some articles can just be compared with each other. Which white towel is the whitest? A. 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 Biological washing powders were first developed some 20 years ago. And biological powders were different because they contained enzymes extracted from cell cultures to help solve a problem. If you wanted to grow plants, flowers or vegetables, then most of us would pop along to the local garden centre and buy a packet of seeds. Or perhaps if you were very skilled, you could collect cuttings from plants already in the garden. Biotechnologists have developed ways of growing plants in laboratory conditions. These plants will grow at any time of the year and can be cultivated in their thousands. The technique uses lengths of stem taken from a parent plant. The flower, together with the side shoots and leaves, are discarded. Each piece of this stem carries a bud
some plants are easily damaged by microbes. Bleach is used to sterilize the small lengths of plant. Sterile equipment is used to transfer the plant stem to a growing medium, plant food. Sterile air blows round the containers to keep these delicate tissues microbe free. The plants are kept warm and in artificial daylight. After three or four weeks in the growth room, plants are big enough to split into smaller pieces. Eventually, there may be tens of thousands of tiny plants. The growing medium is altered to encourage roots to grow, and the plant goes to the greenhouse. The plants, when they're cultured in the growth room, are kept at about 100% relative humidity, and this has to be maintained on the nursery when they're planted out, otherwise they'd wilt and die. This is done by a fog system, which is high-pressure water droplets. All these plants came from one parent. All the new plants will have the properties of that parent. And they'll be as strong and as disease-resistant as the parent plant. This week's school's illustration is a self-portrait by 12-year-old Celia Uden. It's now part of the Cabris National Exhibition of Children's Art. We've come now to the end of our programmes for schools and colleges this Monday morning. Until you join us for your next televised lesson, good morning, schools. You can't serve this up for breakfast. It's horrible. Don't be so fussy. You wouldn't mind breakfast with us, would you, this Sunday? Because we're going to be introducing some great new shows. Cartoons. Fraggle Rock. A new Sunday series of Crazy Kitchen. And a true life adventure series. Oh, yeah, Against the Odds. That's the one. We've got my favourite as well. Black Beauty. Yeah, we've also got some horrible tea and some soggy cornflakes. Well, you shouldn't have got up so late, should you? See you Sunday. Deadly sea serpents, giant squids, and man-eating sharks around a sinking city. Will anyone escape from Atlantis? A thundering new three-dimensional board game from Waddington's. Will your Atlanteans escape in time? Or are they doomed to become a sea serpent's breakfast? Will they tangle with a giant squid? Or perhaps a friendly dolphin will escort them to safety? Who knows how many will live to tell the tale? Escape from Atlantis, the adventure board game that goes deep into the imagination. Pain. When it seems locked in for the day, you need a painkiller that gives relief even in migraine headaches. Neurofen contains only ibuprofen, the first alternative painkiller for more than 25 years. It breaks through pain and is available without prescription. Ask your pharmacist for Neurofen. It's easy to swallow and fast acting. Neurofen for the gentle relief of locked in pain. Wouldn't it be perfect if you could get that rich golden taste in a spreadable form.